Hey pen friends, welcome back to Ginger Peachy Pins. I'm excited for today's video because for the first time ever, I have a pen and an ink that have been sent to me to review. I am so excited. So in my last video, I mentioned a couple of um, exciting things coming. I don't know if you call this a collaboration, but Tom from Gold Spot Pins, I'm sure you all know him very well, um, reached out to me and said, hey, I would like to send you some new stuff that's coming out and um, see what you think. So I said, um, yes, that's awesome. I would love to. <laughs> and um, yeah, it came to me pretty quickly. I just got this today. It was supposed to be delivered yesterday, but here we are. <laughs> As you can see, I have an Opus 88 pen and a Wearing Ghoul ink. Only the second Wearing Ghoul ink I've ever tried. So I'm excited for that. So let's get into this pen first. So this pen is by Opus 88. It is called, it is a collaboration with Gold Spot Pens. It is called Twilight Sonata Demo. It is an eyedropper filler. This is a 2024 limited edition for Gold Spot, a collaboration with Mackenzie Penworks and um, Opus 88. So here we go. Inside the box, we have a little thingamajig that tells us about how to use an eyedropper filler. Let's see, does it have English? It does have English on the back side. That's good. It comes with an eyedropper and an extra little o-ring here is this lovely pen let me just let you have a look oh i hear thunder outside um, if you can hear rain if you can hear water and thunder it is raining can you see this i can't in the camera it looks like you can't see the diamond cast but i can see it in person in the top there well this is number 005 out of 170. I was going to say numbered edition, but I wasn't positive if they were numbered. So this is a diamond cast acrylic from Mackenzie Penworks. Um, like I said, it's in collaboration with Gold Spot. Um, the description says that Twilight Sonata combines icy sky blue with deep night blue and the last fleeting burgundy light of dusk. I like that. Um, and then it says, like the first visible stars in the night sky, real conflict-free diamond dust twinkles throughout the acrylic resin. A stealthy, polished black clip silhouettes against the cap. Isn't that pretty? Matching the polished black PVD finished stainless steel nib. Now, this nib is a Yovo number no. 6 nib. Um, with the Opus 88 branding on it. You see that? And it is really pretty. Anyway, this pen has an eyedropper filling system um, with almost three and a half mils of capacity. That is huge. That is a lot of ink. Um, and to give you an idea, this is your standard um, ink sample vial. Most of us have seen these. And here is the three mil mark. It's so five is the line here. And then it really would hold like six. I mean, if you fill it all the way up to the top, it would hold seven or eight, but, um, let's see one, two, three and a half. So it's like this much ink. Yeah. More than what is in this container right now, this pen will hold. That is a lot of ink actually. So, um, we are going to, yeah, we are going to try all this new ink in it. Let me give you a little bit closer look. This is a kind of a larger pen. Um, no, not kind of, it is, it is a larger pen. Um, very, uh, comfortable unposted. Um, I'll put some measurements up on the screen, uh, right here. You can pause if you want to read them. So let me give you a little comparison to some other pretty well-known pens. Remove this. I'm going to use my little coaster here <laughs> to line them up. So here is this Opus 88. So here's a Twisby Eco. I was actually thinking that these would be similar size, but it is a good bit larger than the Twisby Eco. 
both in width and length. Um, here is a, oh, I'm so not good at this. <laughs> here is an Esterbrook SD. It's about the same length as the SD. Um, and we'll see how it is uncapped in just a minute. Here is a Sailor Pro Gear Slim. As you can see, it's much larger than a Pro Gear Slim. And a Pelican M205. So let me see if I can bring you down a little bit. Here are those lengths. So here they are, uncapped. You can maybe see that it is longer than the, the Esterbrook um, and the Twisby Eco and, of course, the two smaller pens. But, um, yeah, it's quite a, um, a, chunky, a chunky pen here. I think it's really, really pretty, this material is. And um, right off the bat, the grip section feels like it's a comfortable width. So... There's our pen. I'm going to get into the filling system um, when, uh, when I get ready to ink it. So let me put this aside. So let's get into this ink. This is Waring Ghoul um, HP Lovecraft. Can you see this? It says HP Lovecraft. Um, it's the literature series ink in Call of the Cthulhu. I had to look up how to say that. Cthulhu or some just say Thulu without the C. At the beginning um and i did not know i have seen this word before but i did not know what the cthulhu was um, but the description of this ink says that the call of the cthulhu ink draws inspiration from hp lovecraft's supernatural horror tale of of the cthulhu an ancient alien monster lurking beneath the ocean depths it is said that the tentacled ancient one can in infiltrate your mind and drive you mad Y'all, I am not a horror story person. <laughs> like, the most horror I will go is, like, Edgar Allan Poe, uh, The Telltale Heart, you know, or, like, The Mask of the Red Death. I like those stories, but um, I'm not big on horror <laughs> at all. So, but uh, this is the little bottle. It is very similar. Is it the same? It feels similar to some of the smaller sailor bottles, but it is not exactly the same. Those are a little more rectangular, and this is more square. It is a 30 milliliter bottle. Um, this ink is made in Korea. And here is the little card that comes in there. Um, this ink is described as a dark teal with purplish black sheen. So we are going to try it out. All right, here is my trusty Hippo Noto, the ink. Okay, I do not know at this moment where my Kakimori nib is, but um, I'm just gonna use this like paintbrush here. Ooh, it's so pretty. I do love a good teal ink. All right, let's lay this down. I don't want to put too much because I do want us to be able to see like dark to light, you know. So hopefully I will have enough time to let this dry completely before, um, before I need to finish this video. And I'm going to do a little dip ta uh, test, I was going to say taste, um, with just a little uh, Jin Hao nib. And then we will ink that pen. So this is Wearing Ghoul. Call of the Cthulhu. Oh, I missed an H. The teal is really, really pretty. And this purple that's drying right here is also really pretty. Um, so we'll see. It feels like it's a really smooth ink. Let me give you an initial 
view. Hopefully this is going to show up. If not, I will put a picture. <laughs> I will put a picture if I need to on the screen. That's a really beautiful teal. Um, sheen is not always my favorite, but um, I want to see how this looks when it dries. And I'm ready, excited to see how this looks in this pen. So the way that this filling system works is you open this pen up and here is this giant ink reservoir. Now what you're seeing in the middle there, and a lot of you are familiar with this, I know, is look, this almost disappears. That little line, you can see it a little bit, but um, at first glance, I was like, does that turn? And it does. So this turns to bring this valve up and down inside the barrel. Um, it is a shut off valve. So when this, um, when the, the section is screwed in, that valve, when it's closed, will seal off your feed from ink getting into it, from ink coming from here into here. So this, this pen or, um, you know, any of these Opus 88 eyedroppers are really good for traveling. If you're worried about getting on an airplane and the pressure, um, with a fountain pen, which, you know, is, can be an issue, but it's not always, but, um, these pens are great for that. Cause you just really don't have to worry about it. You close up that valve, no extra ink can just, you know, go into the, the feed and you will have little to no spillage, you know? I'm going to use the eyedropper that comes with the pen. It's just a little glass eyedropper. Okay, so I am drawing ink up in my eyedropper and then literally dripping it into here. I'm going to try not to get too much on the threads, especially not towards the top up here because I don't want it to seep out. I don't, I've never had an issue with that with the other Opus 80s I've had, but I just don't want to get too much on the threads that could be potentially messy when I open the pen. And there I did, I dripped it right down the threads there. So I might try to clean a little of that off before I finish up here. Okay. Ooh, this ink is so dark. All right, let's see. All right, so I'm screwing this back on. It does get kind of difficult, not difficult, but tight to screw at the end because there's an O-ring right here that um, helps your pen not to leak. Well, I mean, it just seals up the ink in there. And I'm going to close the valve. Well, no. So when you first get, <laughs> I'm sorry. So when you're first getting these pens to write, you have to open the valve <laughs> to uh, get some ink down towards the nib because all the ink is in the barrel here. We didn't put any in the feed. And um, that's the great thing about a cartridge converter pen is that you can literally draw the ink up through the feed and your feed is ready to go the minute that you that you ink it. You know, with a an eyedropper like this, you do have to wait a little bit for your ink to travel down through the feed and to the nib. So, um, Let's see. I'm going to open up this valve really open, really big, and see if we can get the ink to go down. You don't want to uh, tap your nib real hard on paper or anything, but what I will do is like put my, my other hand underneath and like just tap my hand on my other hand. So you're still getting some of that like downward force, but you're not like banging your nib on the page, which is never what you want to do. Um, and I will say that once you get um, ink down into your feed, you can leave the valve closed and write a page or so. Maybe not a full, you know, it depends on what size your page is, I guess. But with the ink that's in the feed, um, if you're going to write, like do a longer writing session, then you can just open this valve up and leave it open. Um, you will have to eventually open it to let more ink into the feed you know, I mean, it's probably a good idea to open it a little bit um, most of the time when you're writing more than just a few words, just to get, make sure that ink is continuing to flow into the feed and that it just stays, you know, inked and ready to go. I'm setting this aside for just a minute upright. I'm going to stand it in a, well, just stand it to the side there for a minute and show you this ink. 
because it is drying so beautifully. Oh, I really hope we can see this. Um, I hope you can see this in the, the video. The sheen is really, really pretty. Can you see that sheening on the paper? It is a dark, dark teal. And then around the edges, you have this reddish purple sheen and some dark, dark, like black, almost black in the middle. So you can see the teal, the sheen doesn't overtake the writing, doesn't overtake the teal. All right, there's our ink at the nib. Just took a couple of minutes, um, maybe a minute or so just sitting upright and a few little like Kind of shakes. So let me bring this down some more. Oops, sorry, you're wiggly. All right, and this is our Opus 88 demo Twilight Sonata. I got this one with an extra fine nib. Are we surprised? And this ink is, feels really good in this nib. Wow. Um, this is definitely, I mean, it's a Yovo extra fine. So it's not like the Japanese extra fines that are super, um, super, super, super tiny. Um, it's much more like a, a Japanese fine, but man, that feels really good on this paper. And this, um, grip section is super comfortable. Anyway, this is a really, really pretty pen. Oh man, I would not have probably picked this one out of a lineup, <laughs> but, um, in person, it, it just really sparkles. Y'all, I wish my lighting was better in here. Let's see, can you see the sparkle happening in there? That's so pretty. This, I think this is my first I think I have one other pen that has some diamond cast in it, but it's just like solid pink. This is the first diamond cast material pen that I have with so much interest. It's really pretty. This burgundy and the blue just go really well together. And, um, yeah, this pen is, is, um, surpassing my expectations. That's what I'm trying to say. But this one with the size, and this beautiful diamond cast and the number six nib, Yovo nib, um, with this extra fine nib and it being black PVD finished, um, I think makes a difference in, for me. Um, this pen is gorgeous and it is going in my pen case. <laughs> so, um, and I'm surprised by this ink because y'all know, you might know that I have not, um, historically been a big fan of heavy sheening inks, but I wouldn't call this too much sheen. It is definitely there. You can see it, but the sheen doesn't take over your teal. Like I've said this, I know already like, um, Robert Oster fire and ice. I loved that ink when I first got it, but over time I was like, I can't see the blue. <laughs> I can only see the red sheen. And so that was kind of what took me down the path of non-sheening inks but this is really really pretty anyway i hope you've enjoyed this um this pen is just so pretty i'm gonna put it here on top of this box um and this so is this ink and i mean i think these are are just just wonderful and while the teal doesn't match this pen it still has kind of that dark um like moodiness to it and so i don't mind them together really um so these are available starting on May 30th, which might be today or it might be tomorrow, depending on which day I get this video finished and, and posted. But um, May 30th, 2024, there are only 170 and one of them is right here. So um, the price is $149 for this pen and $22 for this ink. Um, one thing I love about Goldspot is their rewards program. Um, 
I was not asked to, to speak about this. I was really not asked to say anything in particular, but, um, gold spot rewards are how I was able to get my, um, Scribo La Dada Aquarello for 20% off because I saved up my rewards from gold spot. Um, so make sure you're signed up for their rewards program. Goldspot is, and I'm not just saying this for this video, but Goldspot is usually the first place that I look for something when I'm shopping because I know I can get those good rewards and um, I know that their shipping is good and yeah, and their customer service is outstanding as well. I've dealt with them a few times and they've always been helpful and kind. So um, anyway, let me know what you think. Um, yeah. Do you own any Opus 88 pens? Does this make you want an Opus 88 pen? And um, let me know if you pick this one up. I would love to see that. So thank you again to Tom at Goldspot for uh, seeing potential in me and my channel and offering these items to me to, uh, to review, to show you guys. So um, thank you, Tom. I appreciate it. And was so excited to get your, uh, your message. And um, so Anyway, thank y'all so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your week and a great weekend, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye!